So I'm always looking for more ways to do things with less stuff. In this video, I think I've found a way to do live streaming with recording lot live stream, with effects, with multiple iPhones as cameras, all using one iPad to control it and edit it with no traditional computer in sight. And it's free. Hey guys, what's going on? JP here. Welcome to the channel. If you've never been here before and you want to learn all about music tech and looping and some streaming advice as well, then click the subscribe button, hit that bell, and you won't miss anything. So searching around the internet and different forums, I've had a look and found an app that's not completely new, but it's got some really cool features where you use your iPhone or even an iPod Touch as a camera and it wirelessly transmits that information to an iPad. And the iPad is your central control for both recording, editing, and live streaming all in one app. And the two apps we're talking about today that connect to each other are all made by Cinemaker. Now for the device that you're gonna be using as a camera, whether it's gonna be an iPad, an iPhone, or even an iPod Touch, you're gonna to need the Cinemaker Capture app. What the Capture app does is turn the phone or the iPad or the iPod into a camera, but also a wireless transmitter. You get some pro controls for the camera itself, and then it transmits that into the second app, which is on an iPad. Now it's iPad only at the moment because you need the real estate for the screen. And the app is called Multicam Studio by Cinemaker. There's two levels of this. There's a free version and there's a studio version. Now the free version lets you connect up to two iPhones as video assistants and you use the iPad as a preview and controlling of those devices. You can do overlays, text, graphics, and picture in picture. And you can live stream to Facebook Live YouTube Live and RTMP services. The real clever part is it can archive all this to iCloud. And it also has Adobe, Premiere, and Final Cut Pro compatibility and extensions. Now, all of that is completely free. And for most people, if they've got one or maybe two cameras, that's gonna be enough to get them up and running with live streaming, or if you just wanna put a little bit of content together, it's really, really cool. Now in the studio version, you can do all of that, but you can add two more devices. So you can have four iPhones as camera assistants. You can overlay movie clips as well, which if you're looking to do a bit of playback, that's really, really useful. You can input audio clips as well. So if you've got sound bites, maybe you're doing a live stream and you wanna do an applause, you can add them in. And then also in the studio version, there's chroma key effects as well. You can import anything that's got a HDMI or SDI output as a camera. And you've also got virtual cameras as well so you can have a total of seven devices four can be iPhones and the other three can be either virtual or you could have a digital SLR as one of your cameras now the studio version you can trial for seven days and then after that it's 29.49 in pounds a month or you can do it for 12 months which is 194.99 now that sounds quite steep if you're just dipping into live streaming so the free version is probably going to be enough for most people but if you're doing this professionally and it's going to be a massive asset for having multiple cameras having that 12 month or one month subscription is a really competitive price remember you can outsource this to an rtmp so if you've got something like restream you could then send it to there and then that can send it out to things like youtube and facebook and twitch and everywhere else now a really clever part of this which i like is when you finish the recording either locally or live stream it then saves that locally onto the ipad and you can re-edit it all the layers are re-editable and all the camera assistants, which are iPhones, all record audio as well as video and you can turn each one of them on and off. Like me, I've got a microphone which is just up here and that's plugged into my iPhone which I'm looking at right now. The thing with that is that's external audio. When you plug the microphone into the Capture app, it automatically recognizes that there's something plugged in so it knows it's external audio. There's loads of camera features, things like exposure, things like the brightness, things like the ISO that you can change either on the camera assistant itself or what you can do is you can control it all on the director iPad. So you know that old iPhone you've got lying around or it's in a drawer somewhere? Get it out. It can suddenly become your second camera. Now, if I was performing, all I'd need is a camera pointing at me and a second camera pointing at the floor to show you my pedal board. So we've got this one. This is the iPhone 6. It's not even a 6S. And it's got a little crack on the display. I don't care about that. What I care about is the camera. And the camera works. So we've downloaded the Capture app to this phone. And this is going to be the second camera that we're going to show you in a minute. And it's cost me nothing. It's not cost me anything extra. And I've got a new camera to play with. 
So I'm gonna show you a typical setup that I have when I'm demoing something on this channel and how I could use Cinemaker to actually capture this either with live stream or for editing later. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so you join us here as if I am setting up for a normal YouTube video or live stream. So I've got the head rush, I've got my microphone, which is going into my speaker, which is down there. And here's the iPad, and we've got the iPad here, and you can see that there. And that's actually controlling this entire setup. So over there is the iPhone 10, which is plugged in with a microphone, which is just here. And it's just that shot. That's the microphone I use, which is my shotgun microphone. So you can hear me when I'm talking about things as opposed to going through a system. And then what we've got, and you can see on the table here, I've got another iPhone, which is just pointing at the head rush. So I've created a couple of things. So first of all, if I tap on here, I've got my little logo, you can bring that in, you can bring anything in, and then it's just got the little eye to say that that's visual, and I can turn that off. Now I put a transition on that, which is a slide, so if I tap on that again, it slides in from the top, and if I tell it to go away, it slides back up again. Now the other thing as well, as you can see in the bottom here, we've got John Paul's iPhone, and what I can do is if I tap on that, it'll literally switch over and that's fantastic. So you can upgrade to have two more devices if you want and there can be two iOS devices as long as they can get the capture app on that device. Now I can make a transition if I want to. So in the top right hand corner, I can go to here and they can say cross dissolve. So let's turn that over to say a second. So let's do that now. And then when we move from one to the other, you'll see it cross dissolves over really nicely. You can do other things. So we could say minify and then that'll switch over that way like that and then just minify over. Or you can do slide down and cross dissolve. So we could do that and it cross dissolves over. So nice little transitions there just to make it a little bit more professional. This is your media, you've got your cameras and then this is where you can control the cameras. So you can set them up in different parts of the room. So right now we're on camera number one which is the John Paul Music UK camera which is that one. And what I can do is I can play around with the zoom, I can move it around. So I'm gonna zoom it out actually so you can just see there's my shotgun microphone. And we can play around with the exposure level and I can mess around with it and completely change it if I want to. So we've got the ISO there, we can change it. And then once we've got it set, you can set that balance. You can set the white balance, the focus mode, every. So if I go over to camera two, you can see the little down arrow there, I can tap that and then there's camera two underneath and I can do exactly the same thing. So maybe in that part of the room, it's actually really, really bright. You wanna change the exposure or you wanna change the ISO. If we tap and go back over to camera number one, you can see those transitions are still happening. And I really like that. You can also bring in the audio level. So you can see that, that microphone level is coming in to the camera, which is plugged in over there. And for audio, it does say on the screen, externals, you know very well, very simply, that it's that microphone, not the internal microphone of the device. You can even dial into that and change it from stereo to mono. I can drop it down. Maybe the audio pickup is not very, very bright. People say on a live stream, it's a bit quiet, so I can actually dial it up. The next part is chroma keying, which is just awesome. So you can put a chroma key on, so which if you're not sure what that is, that's when you're using things like green screens. So you put a green screen up, say you're doing a performance, you want to backdrop off something like a pub. You can do that really, really easily. Finally, the last section here is transitions and where you're transitioning from. Now, with the transitions, you can have different things for different cameras. So I'm on camera one right now, and it's on Minify. So if I change this over to Cross Dissolve, that's for that camera. If I go over to camera two, there we go, I can go slide down. So if I do that, it'll move across. And you can say what duration it is. On top right hand corner, we've got two buttons there. This top one here is just this side panel. What you can do is you can make it all the way down or you can bring it back, certainly if you've got four cameras. And then the next one is a question mark. And what that does is it just shows you how you do everything with it. Now there's a couple of things you can do with the upgraded version. First of all, you've got four cameras. You can also do what's called a virtual camera. And you've also got a couple of extra features with that as well. But for something like a live stream, this is fantastic because I can control it right from here. I don't have to go over to that camera. Certainly if I want to use the better cameras on the back of the iPhone, I can't turn the phone around to see the live stream. So I've got a phone here, I've got an iPad here and a phone here, and I can utilize them just as cameras. And I can move, bring this over if you're doing a tutorial and I'm talking about the buttons, I can move this over and we can just position it really, really well. Now, Cinemaker, I'm not sponsoring this video. This is just an app that I found and I've been playing around with it a little bit 
and I think it's really good. And this is just an independent review of this app. My question to you is what do you think? Are you getting into live streaming? Are you doing it for performance wise or maybe just for live streaming what you think? Uh, then have a look at this app if you're using an iOS device or iPhone and you've got an iPad as well. This is a massive game changer in the sense of using it just on iOS. You've also got actual control where you can put things like overlays or if you've got uh, logos or anything like that, you can put that on as well. And then it saves it all for you directly on the iPad. How many times have you done a Facebook live stream and then you've got to go back into Facebook to re-download that live stream and it might look a bit choppy because that's how Facebook received it. Well, this is a bit better because the camera and audio information is being saved directly on the iPad. Both the Capture app and the Director app are completely free to download and it's completely free to start using where you have two cameras. So if you do want to try out the studio version, it is free for seven days. So obviously you can give that a whirl. If you have found the content of this video useful, then please give it a thumbs up. That really helps me, helps the channel grow, and then it sends it out to more people who might find this information useful. If you want to support me a little bit further, you can do. You can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com. All the links are in the description box below. To those who have bought me a coffee already, thank you so much. You are helping keep this channel alive. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.